Joining us on the phone from Franklin College in Franklin, Indiana is Ray Begovich, who recently made a remarkable discovery at the National Archives. Mr. Begovich, thanks for joining us. Uh, can you describe what you found? Yes, thank you for having me. I was going through some raw footage shot by the Navy during uh, President Roosevelt's visit there to Pearl Harbor in 1944. I was looking for a footage of another person of whom I'm writing a biography and accidentally came across this amazing eight seconds of footage which appeared to show President Roosevelt being pushed in his wheelchair. Now, you can't see his wheelchair but clearly from the motion and um, the height of the president compared to those around him, he was, he was a tall man, he was six feet two inches tall, um, clearly he's being pushed in, in the wheelchair. Can you provide a, a bit of context? Where did this happen about the, in the time it was recorded? It was an amazing um, event. Um, a lot of people don't know that President Roosevelt did indeed visit Pearl Harbor, which in a symbolic sense, I think, brings uh, World War II full circle. This was in July of 1944, and all the, although the war was still going on on both fronts, the uh, Pacific Ocean was uh, well in, in the control of the U.S. Navy well enough so that the president could sail from San Diego, California, all the way to Pearl Harbor, where the war began. And this was just about two and a half years after uh, uh, the Japanese attack on that island. Why is the video significant? Well, it's significant in several ways. Most important is because we need to have more positive images of national leaders uh, who may have a disability. Now, the president uh, and his staff and cooperating journalists kept this uh, pretty well secret from the public, that the president used a wheelchair to get around. So I think it's, it's uh, extremely significant um, in terms of um, presenting images of people with disabilities. And, uh, you know, frankly, we, we don't have people running for national office who have disabilities. It's extremely rare, and um, I hope that this is one baby step toward getting to a time when um, we focus on leadership and character and policies, and the fact that someone uses a wheelchair or a guide dog or sign language doesn't matter at all. What did the public know about FDR's health issues? Well, you know, the public knew that FDR had polio, um, they knew he had some difficulty walking. There was plenty of uh, film footage and still photographs of FDR being helped, often by one of his sons, uh, walk a few steps to a lectern. But the public was, was mostly in the dark about the extent of his need for, for a wheelchair to get around. So that's another amazing aspect of this. When we compare the type of uh, news coverage of a president in the 1930s and 40s compared with the type of news coverage of a president today, we can see that, that this would absolutely not happen today. Um, we know much more about our president's uh, uh, health and medical status um, than, um, than the voters did at that time. So what did you do when you stumbled on the video? Who did you call first? Well, um, I, uh, uh, any researcher is, is is um, highly indebted to the uh, fan f fantastic staff at the National Archives and at Presidential Libraries. They're extremely helpful. They made a copy of it for me, and it took me a, a few years until I actually had time to work on it and to get enough uh, other documentation about this, this trip. And um, I showed it to a few colleagues here I, uh, uh, and got their opinion uh, of it. I um, did extensive searches myself online to see if I could find any other film footage. I had two uh, research librarians who also helped me with an online search to see if we could find something else. And the other thing I did was take it up to the uh, 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 FDR Library and Museum in his hometown of Hyde Park, New York, uh, provided them the video on DVD. And although they, they could not say that that's the absolutely only footage that exists of FDR in the wheelchair, uh, they certainly said that they didn't know of any other, and, you know, it's at least extremely rare. 
You mentioned that you found the video at the National Archives. What were you doing there? I was doing research on a, a famous uh, journalist and public relations professional named Elmer Davis. Mr. Davis is from Indiana. He graduated in 1910 from the college where I teach, Franklin College, just south of Indianapolis. He worked for the New York Times, CBS Radio, and ABC Radio, but during the war, he was FDR's director of the Office of War Information. And the Office of War Information was charged with um, telling the American people and uh, people in other countries about the uh, United States war effort. Um, when did you actually find the video? You know, that's a good question. I believe it was in 2009 or 2010. And, um, you know, um, I have a lot of research projects going on, plus teaching full time. And so I was only able to work on this in bits and pieces. Over the ensuing years, I was able to find um, uh, still photographs from that uh, presidential trip to Pearl Harbor and other documentation, particularly um, the U.S. Navy's log of that trip, uh, so that I can confirm uh, exactly what was going on, who was with the president, and the exact dates when things were happening. So it, took, it took me a little while working in bits and pieces to, um, to bring this forward. But my, my hope is, I am not an FDR scholar, but my hope is that this little accidental snippet will encourage other historians and archivists to look more purposely um, for film footage of President Roosevelt in his wheelchair and perhaps find some more and perhaps find some more um, that, is, that is more clear than mine. Can you tell us a little bit more about Franklin College? What do you teach? I teach public relations and courses dealing with uh, mass communications and media theory and media history. And Professor, Franklin, yes. Oh, go ahead. I'll finish up your thought. Yeah, we are a small liberal arts college just um, just south of Indianapolis, and we are fortunate to have uh, our own um, fully endowed school of journalism here called the Pulliam School of Journalism. So uh, the history uh, of uh, journalism and public relations at uh, our excellent little college in Indiana runs very deep. Professor Ray Begovich, appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.